despite leaking that he would speak before his arrest and arraignment, or, or maybe after his arrest and arraignment. Or maybe during. Or maybe during his arrest and arraignment, <laughs> uh, thus ensuring that the cameras would be on him all day. Uh, the former president today did not speak publicly, either before or after his arrest and arraignment. From the transcript of the closed-door arraignment, we do know that he briefly spoke in court, but only to say things like, not guilty, Your Honor. That said, the former president did give a speech tonight when he was back home in Florida. And as expected, he spent much of that speech attacking the various prosecutors who are investigating him or now outright indicting him. As I said, we, we did kind of expect that. However, I wonder if he surprised his lawyers when, at that same speech this evening, he started talking loosely about the documents that he brought with him from the White House that he wasn't supposed to take to his private residence. <laughs> Why did he bring that up? Joining us now from Mar-a-Lago is NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard, who has been there to see the whole thing. Vaughn, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good evening, guys. I, look, you're looking at a situation with Donald Trump has a litany of lawyers working on all these various cases. Boris Epstein is his lead counsel coordinator here who has been traveling him with him to New York. And he came back down here to Florida. But as it pertains particularly to the documents case, I think it's a prime example of for Donald Trump, for so many of these cases, it's not even necessarily of a denial of the alleged crimes or the actions, but more so it's on the basis of the merits. Uh, when it pertains to the documents case, tonight his quote from the stage here was, quote, as president, I have the right to declassify documents, and the process is automatic if I take them with me. Of course, all of this is going to go if, in the case of the documents case, he were to be indicted. But each of the statements that he makes up on the stage, on the campaign trail, in the weeks and the months ahead, you could expect to be a part of any trial on any of these cases here. And I think that the one prevailing line that I walk away with tonight was this from Donald Trump. It was, quote, our just justice system has become lawless. Again, I'll say it. Our justice system has become lawless. And I think a part, important part of my job now in year number eight of covering Donald Trump politically, is how his words up on a stage ultimately make it down to the uh, American people level here. And over the course of these eight years, we have seen him undercut Americans' trust in the media. And we've seen over the last eight years him undercut the trust in America's uh, 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 intelligence agencies. We've seen him undercut Americans' trust in our elections. And then to so hear that tonight, is, this is now an effort to undercut Americans' trust in the justice system. When you talked about the district attorney in Manhattan, uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg, tonight he said, quote, the criminal is the district attorney. He should resign. When talking about the judge overseeing this case, Juan Mershon, he said, quote, this is where we are right now. I have a Trump-hating judge with a Trump-hating wife. This is the same playbook we have seen over the course of the eight years. And every single one of those individuals who has investigated him, attempted to prosecute him, or judges that have overseen various cases, he has gone to this idea and this concept of this being a witch hunt here. But he also took on Fonnie Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney, suggesting she's doing whatever she can to indict him. Called Letitia James a racist. Jack Smith called him a lunatic. This comes all just one week after he suggested and proposed that each of these individuals should be ousted from their positions. For Donald Trump, well, the words that he says from these stages, they do hit the uh, 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 at the level on the ground in which going to Waco, Texas last weekend with him. You know, these are echoed from folks on the ground. I think it's important, the difference here and the distinction. He did not speak in the courtroom here today. And in so many ways, the campaign stage is the one place where he does have control of that microphone. And there is no judge overseeing him. And until there is a gag order in place, we should expect Donald Trump to continue to play offense because that's the only game that he has ever seemed to play. Well, to that point, I mean, there isn't, as you say, Vaughn, there isn't a, a gag order today. But we did see the judge entertain that at length and substantively at the arraignment today, which is an unusual thing to come up um, at, the, you know, first instances, right, at the arraignment. Was there any sense, and as you say, you've been covering Trump for a very long time, in which that seemed to loom a little, a little bit for him? Because if he is hit with a gag order in this case, which the judge explicitly said today is possible, if the kind of rhetoric that he said he found concerning continues, then Trump will be constrained by law from being able to say those kinds of things about prosecutors and judges and prosecutors' family members and judges' family members. Um, and, and if he does go too far, he will face consequences for that for the first time 
in his life. Does, does that seem to have loomed for him at all or inflected at all uh, the kind of emphasis he put on those very controversial points? Right. There is no direct suggestion of potential death and destruction today or years of hatred, chaos and turmoil ahead. And so I guess that's where the question comes down to when you're taking personal attacks at individuals, at prosecutors, at, uh, at district attorneys. To what extent does that parlay into the suggestion to the American people that these people uh, that there should be uh, uh, direct efforts to take them on in whatever context that means? I mean, I was out there on the Capitol or on the West Front of the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And I can tell you from conversations that day uh, and conversations since, there are folks that are galvanized and follow his lead. And for Donald Trump here, he is not naive to that. And that's also why you see the likes of Ron DeSantis and Mike Pence coming to his defense here, hmm. because they understand that the Republican base of support in this Republican Party today is living in a reality that is listening to OAN, Newsmax, right side broadcasting, and the speech that those millions of folks heard tonight here and the commentary that followed it is a very different reality and juxtaposition of where our country finds itself, where our election system finds itself, where our agency, our intelligence agencies are directed, where our justice system is. They're living in the area of perception of our American federal government and state governments today here is a, a very different one than the conversation we have been having over these last hours. NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard. Vaughn covering President Trump tonight at Mar-a-Lago. Really invaluable to have you there for us, Vaughn. Thank you. Much appreciated.